the gentlewoman from Ohio, Mrs. Beatty, who is also the chair for the subcommittee on diversity and inclusion is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And let me say to all of the witnesses today, thank you for being here. Uh, first, I'd like to make a comment, Mr. Williams, to you. I can't imagine what's going through your mind now as you're sitting there, but I wanna say thank you for sharing your story. And certainly it confirms for most of us, or should, why we are here. And it made me proud that a few years ago when I got here, I'm a very family-oriented person, so I said to my team, let's talk about family unification. And we were able to get $20 million in the family unification program, and money had not been in there since 2010. And we were able to put more money, not enough, but your story will help me and hopefully help all of us. And, and let me end with this. I wanna take this time to say more than thank you, but what you did today for Jalen made all the difference. And let me tell you how I know. Madam Chairwoman, when I left this seat, I went and spent the last 22 minutes with your son. And it was the best 22 minutes that I could have ever invested in housing and family. I took him to my office and showed him pictures of African-American men and family who've had the same story as you shared today, including my story. When my father's house burned down with all his brothers and sisters in it, and they found themselves homeless. And I looked at him and said, but I'm sitting here in the United States Congress. And then he took a picture in my office and he beamed, but here's what's so important, Mr. Williams. He looked up at me and he said, my dad's a hero. And that's the message he's taking back home. And that's the message I want you to have. And I wanna say thank you. Now, let me uh, move to you, Ms. Chapel. Uh, back in August, I held a community conversation with some 400 constituents in my third congressional district. And what overwhelmingly and alarmingly we heard was the whole issue of gentrification. And in your testimony, you focused on how it can affect affordable housing, specifically in, in rental housing. But let me just tell you what we heard for seniors and retirees who own their home, that they have trouble keeping up with it because of the increased property tax. And specifically, our county treasurer, Cheryl Brooks Sullivan, told us that nearly 30% of the foreclosures in our county were from people not paying their property taxes. Those constituents shared there that it was because of gentrification that they weren't able because people would come in and increase home values in new homes and folks with more disposable income. And here they had been in their home for 30 or 40 years and their property tax went up. Can you briefly discuss the effects on our elderly and our retirees as it relates to gentrification? Thank you so much for raising that point. Uh, in California, we have Prop 13, so we actually uh, homeowners are not displaced. But this is a critical issue, and uh, in in the East Coast, in New Jersey, in um, in, in in Ohio, in um, Austin, Texas, there's some uh, attempt to pass new legislation that can help keep uh, a low-income property owners, many of them seniors, in place. Uh, by mitigating or, or adjusting those property tax increases. So I would uh, urge your constituents to, to look at that. Okay. Thank you. And, and Mr. Uh, Desmond, I want to thank you for being here, and I want to thank you uh, for the writings in your book, Evicted. I've been carrying it around all day. Uh, my team is reading it. And, and to you, Mr. Williams, there are some compelling stories in here, so you're not alone that Mr. Desmond has shared with us, not only that it happens, but how we as legislators and members of Congress can help. So Mr. Desmond, can you quickly discuss the importance of providing emergency assistance before a family ends up like Mr. Williams? Sure, the importance is for a lot of families, it doesn't take a huge emergency or a big crisis to push them toward eviction. Some very small change in their incomes 
can do it, or a very small increase in, in rents can be the thing that's separating a home from homelessness. We know studies have shown that it's actually cheaper to invest in emergency assistance than to bear the cost downstream that we're currently paying for a large tolerance of residential instability. Thank you, and I yield back. 